<laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, my name is Steven. There is no music. The, the whole live thing, it's, it's something that I will one day pick up. Where's my music? Right here. There we go. That is music. Uh, my name is Steven. Uh, Steven Philippel. I will bring up something that will show at the bottom. So if you want to find me later after the stream or during the stream. Right down here is my name, where you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. But Instagram, you can still find me with Stephen Philip Powell or NZ Stephen F. All right, so with that said, I need to find the rundown. Here it is. Okay, so if you need to let the music speak, let the music speak is a a podcast, a podcast style show where I bring on guests to talk about music and themselves and how that all comes into one. So every guest you'll get to know them a bit better, we'll explore music through our taste, look at the industry and how much of an impact that it has had in our lives. Uh, as chat, you can voice your opinions throughout the stream, come and chat and chat and we will bring up your comments throughout the stream. If you're on YouTube, and you watch this later, feel free to drop in the comments because I do check the comments uh, section. And now I am joined by one of my favorite and one of the greatest, you're probably like, mate, <laughs> uh, one of the greatest broadcasters uh, on New Zealand radio. It's uh, Sharon Casey from The Edge. Woo! This side, it's flipped on the, on the stream. Yeah! Hey! I'm so excited to be here and so excited to like finally meet you in real life because we have talked via social media for so long. So yeah, this it's is been be yonks. Awesome. And it's like my first Twitch. I've never Twitched before. Welcome to the the Twitch Fano, where we <laughs> we play games, talk a lot of sometimes good stuff, sometimes maybe just low banter. But yeah, welcome to <laughs> welcome to Twitch. Well, it's good to be here, and I'm glad. I'm glad that it's with you that I do my first Twitch experience. Hell yeah! <laughs> Always, yeah. It'll be cool. There's, there's gonna be some uh, great stuff that we're going to talk about now and in the future, which, uh, which is gonna be quite yeah. neat. Awesome. Yeah. So for um, we've still got people coming in because Twitch notifications. Hi. Uh, for those who might not know you, can you tell us about yourself, what is it you do for work, and where can people find you? Well, my name is Sharon Casey. I am a radio slash TV slash uh, podcast presenter, and I have worked for the Edge radio station for coming up 15 years. And I also host Tally. I've done a few shows over the year. I started out in music TV, uh, doing four live, and then I uh, went into doing the after show X Factor with Extra Factor, um, and Dancing with the Stars, Gogglebox, and a few other projects on the way as well. Um, but I also host a podcast called Trainee Sexologist with my best friend who is a sexologist. So very busy, also a full-time mum as well. So there's a lot on my plate, but it's a good life to live. Yeah, little Tyson. <laughs> I always I see the little post like the just the the kids are getting very intelligent like they're, they're small they're young but they just pick up so much they absorb so much oh and just God. the cheek that you'd get like um my niece there'll be things that she'll say I'm like wait what what did you just say <laughs> and it's coming from like a nine-year-old where a nine-year-old me wouldn't have like even thought of even like coming up with the the things they come uh. up with nowadays yeah Oh my god, his banter is out the gate. Like he's been a showman from day one. So I, uh, we're either gonna love teenage years or one of us is not gonna survive. Because <laughs> You'll end up on those real, like real <laughs> missing persons thing, kind of like yeah. Spiel. All right. It'll be like, mum go. Mum went to get some milk and she <laughs> never came back. back. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So that's great. Thank you for um mentioning like. A little bit about yourself. So the next, po the little next portion in here, uh, I need to lock my spreadsheet. It keeps that since I've been doing this live for four episodes, so over a month, my Google Sheets gets real effed up. Like it just <laughs> things start disappearing. Like yo, computer. You gotta start doing it like the news, baby. That's that's why they're shuffling those papers. So when your computer lets you down, you can go. Oh yeah. School. This, this like, I've got like these pages. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what that's what they're doing. They've always got their back up. But that's that's the thing. That happens to the best of us. So no long no matter how long you're in the broadcasting game for, you will always have a computer let you down at some point. So don't even stress about it. Hell yeah, there's been times where our streams crashed on here for letting music speak and it's just come on, yo, technology. You're yeah, evolved yeah. from like <laughs> floppy disk and this is the yeah. this is what happens. Alright, yeah. so how long have you been in broadcasting in the broadcasting industry for? And what has inspired you to kind of go deep into radio and TV broadcasting? I always loved radio. I used to listen to this. Um, I used to listen to the Morning Pirate and Baz Ross and Timaru, and um, they did this awesome morning show. And yep. they also used to have this like syndicated around the world. They had the Rick D's Weekly Top Forty, and it was the first kind of international radio countdown that played every weekend and like it was so big that it kind of stopped everywhere like the world stopped listening to rick d's yeah. and like he was just amazing and i still remember things like he taught like he had a a q a thing and um he interviewed someone about how you should sh like i learned how to shave my legs listening to rick d's which sounds creepy now yeah um but i just fell in love with it so i used to do my own uh rick d show um but I ended up leaving school when I was 15 and I worked full time, um, supermarket, retail, and then into a music store. And I had been obsessed with The Edge, which is the station I worked for since I was 13 years old. And I was working in a signing tent at Edge Fest. And the marketing manager at the time, Sean Joyce, was like, uh, saw JJ, uh, JJ, Mike and Dom on stage. And she was like, he turned around and said to me, he was like, oh my God, who could do that? He was like, I could just see you doing that. And the next day I actually Googled, um, and I got to kind of interact with people from the edge that day. And it was just this amazing vibe that I wanted to be part of. And it was everything that I had thought that it was. And the next day I applied for radio school and 16 years later, the rest is history. I started out in um, the Wairarapa doing breakfast on More FM with a guy named Brent. And I was also doing promos for like three other stations as well. And Funny you mentioned I... that. I was literally watching a couple of days ago your um, shout out to my ex parody. And just like how you just mentioned like Brent, like just all those things, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it was like, the, we, so we had that, uh, so I started, a, I won my job on the edge, they did a quit your day job, and I started out on the night show and I did that for five years, and then I kind of just wanted more, like I felt like I ha had grown out of that demographic because it's quite um, like high school, and I really wanted to try something else, and yeah, for my sure. boss Leon has always been like super supportive and really empowering of like women, and he really taught me how to use my voice, and he was like, um, okay, cool. And then the next day he was like, what about music director of The Edge? You can, and you can read Scandal for Fletcher and Bourne and you can do days. And I was like, yeah, I would love to do that. And so I split the day show with um, Megan Puffers, who's now with Fletcher and Bourne. And then it kind of worked out better that I went and read news for JJ, Mike and Dom because I got on better with Dom and yep. Megan is... Uh, Jaden, he actually had the same sort of experience as you, right? Won, jo won the job through um, yes, Quit Your Day yeah, Job. Yeah, so he won through um, Quit Your Day Job. We've done Quit Your Day... The Edge has done Quit Your Day Job three times. The first time they found Vaughn Smith, the second time they found me, and the third time uh, we found Jaden, which was really cool. Um, but he wasn't working in, uh, like he wasn't working, he'd never been on air before where I was, Vaughn and I had both been on air for a while, like a year or so before we started. So we kind of had that in yep. the pocket, but, um, Jaden's had absolutely nothing in the pocket and he's had to learn everything on the biggest platform. So, uh, it's quite admirable what he's managing to do. So I'm really proud of Has him. Has he gone through broadcasting school or is he just like straight from the... Straight from he, pure he did like the broadcasting school in Wellington, so the same one that like I did, John O'Prior did, my husband Bryce did, um, where it's just the six month diploma rather than the three year degree. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we both kind of did that together and um, did the same school. So he's had a little bit of experience, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, it's what a natural, like just getting straight in there and like from the stuff you learn and just, he's now producer's part, right? Part producer, Part, um, host no, at the same he's time. Full, no, he's full. He's just host, so he's anchor. So yep. he does the ins and outs of the break. But he, um, 
Yeah, he's he's kind of like, there was a thing I always loved about Jaden is that he's just walking sunshine. Like there's nothing bad about him. He's the most positive person in the world. And, um, you know, he reminds me very much of your personality where straight away it's just like, just they instantly make you feel good when you have a conversation with them. And I just wanted to like, I think as many people like that on the radio as possible is oh, awesome. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's my like thing is you always pass positivity just onto people just because yeah. you don't know if they're having a crap shit day and just like if you just yeet the positive vibes it might just <laughs> bring their day up right and like they might pass it on like that little domino effect yeah definitely it's like it's the classic there'll be nobody old enough on twitch to remember constable keith and sniff but their catchphrase used to be if you see someone without a smile give them one of yours and that's like that's my aim kind of with radio is to you know, remind myself I'm always living the dream and also just to try and make somebody feel something, usually happiness, um, when they would listen to our shows. So yeah. it's kind of the coolest in the world in that respect. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so we're going to talk about the radio sort of aspect uh, for this, po uh, this portion. So being at yeah. the edge, what has been things you've learned uh, personally about the industry, about yourself uh, during this kind of like adventure that you've had with um, The Edge for 15 years? I think that I was really, really lucky to have, uh, like when I moved to Auckland and joined The Edge, I was really lucky to have uh, Leon as our content director and he's now the group content director. And I don't mean that in like a sucking up to your boss way. Um, he kind of, in a weird way helped me find myself and find my voice and taught me how to fight for what I want and stand up for myself and yeah. to tap into creativity that I didn't know that I had. And I think Dom was always also a really big um, influence in that as well. When I worked on his breakfast show, he kind of um, mentored me and some days that was hard, but I always just was like, cool, I'll take your critique. And he completely changed my game as a broadcaster. Yeah. Um, so I think what I've learned is I learned who I was, what I believe in, and not being afraid to say what I think. And like the place that I, um, the place that I feel the most safe to use my voice and I can sit in a room and be the only woman in the room and not be afraid to speak up is yeah. when I am at radio, like hundred percent. I'm never ever afraid to, say what I think. So I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned. And also just to not take things so seriously, which is hard because I'm a real people pleaser. Um, but yeah, that would that would be it for me. Same here. I'm always a people pleaser as well. It's the thing I like, it's just the, yeah. please appreciate me. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I was talking about this with, um, with the comedian James Roque the other day. And yeah. we were saying, you know, like how entertainers, like broadcasters, presenters, comedians, actors, actresses, we all have um, this confidence to like go and perform, but we're also the most insecure people ever, which is yeah. really weird. So it's like what goes up must come down. So yeah, it's a, it's a weird a weird job for people that are people pleasers to be part of. <laughs> yeah, for sure. When like the last thing you want is just to hear a real bad comment be like, you're smiling, but deep down you're like, <laughs> that hurts, I'm crying on the inside. <laughs> Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. Yeah, there's um, some clips that I saw when I was doing a bit of like research for this episode, like, especially like crowd pleaser and trying to please as much people as you can. One of the things that I did see was a, um, there was a bit that was put up on the show accounts for Edge Afternoons was uh, Jaden using Marty and you just been like, like Leon, use your voice, use the person you are to, you know, just beam it out of you to the audience and like you just saying you know you're proud of him always using it it's not just like you know a gimmick just the simple yeah. cure to and then just you don't hear any hear any of it again and i always like advocate to you know i don't speak fluent maori but being half maori i always feel like it's part responsibility to like you know just keep the language alive and i use it with like my friends who are american and they also use it. it's like there's the appreciative like you know they'll say kyoto when i say kyoto to them and it's just like you know it's yeah you're using the impact of a language yourself to just keep going and you know, in that sort of way you know like Tereo is one of our official languages in new zealand it's yeah. the native language of our country 
So to be sitting on air and not embracing it and not using it, I think that's fucked up. So I have always wanted to use more and more and Jaden, I think it was really hard. Like it's hard for Jaden because people probably look at him and just think he's another white boy on the radio, but he is very, very passionate about his Maori culture. And I love the mana that he has about it. And I love that he uses it all the time and he teaches all of us. And if anyone says yeah. a word wrong, he'll, he'll helpfully correct us and things. And so when people try to put him down for using his language, which is a national language, in my book, I might, well, go listen somewhere else, man, because our show is about making people feel as inclusive as possible, whether it's using Tereo or whether it's making sure we don't say things like ladies and gentlemen, because that automatically excludes people that don't identify as he or she. That if we aren't standing up for that, then who will? Especially yeah. when we have a platform to set a standard. And nothing pisses me off more than when I hear a broadcaster not even saying taupo properly, but they can say Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Gris. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That pisses me off. It's like, I'm not, you know, it's like if your name is Mike and I call you Mick, that would piss you off. So yeah. taupo is taupo, it's not taupo. taupo. So explain, you know, say it properly. You're and like tauranga and not tauranga. Yeah. Yes, it's like you're not even trying. So all you're doing is proving that A, you're not that intelligent because you can't say the word properly. B, you're not even giving it a go. And yeah. C, like you don't care about being a good broadcaster because you don't care enough to actually make an effort with our native language. Like, yeah, so, yeah don't get started. I'll be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's awesome. Like you're always passionate about, you know, fronting those who, you know, they always try and find that voice and you give that platform especially with um the edge itself but your show itself to you know have those voices heard yeah, yeah. well thank you i appreciate um i appreciate that it is noted we don't do it for it to be noted but um it's nice to know that it's coming across because that's exactly how we want people to feel when they listen to the show yeah so one of the next questions actually kind of fed back into it might be more answers you could give to this but What's your origin yeah. story of being at the edge and how did you... Okay, yeah, that came... Yeah, sorry, that past me was like, I always have these, these questions, like, sort of sorted. Um, actually... No, no, you're okay. All right, uh, yeah, sorry. so could you give us a bit of a, like, an origin story? Like, the Sharon Casey slash uh, Wakefield sort of your origins movie sort of story. Like, how did you come to be at the edge? So I went, so it was like, we did that age fest and then I went to radio school and then I was kind of slaving away at More FM, earning like $21,000 a year, working seven days a week, working. Doing that hustle and, and grind. Out. Yeah, but that's the thing about radio or any industry, like attitude is everything. So you, uh, my thing, and I always say that to the interns and things like that, I'm like, play the long game. Like, because you've got the energy to play the long game right now. Yeah. You don't have kids, you don't have responsibilities. You will not like, you know, those sorts of responsibilities. Like, play the long game. If you've got to work for free now, it's going to pay off for you in the long run. So just yeah. get it done and then down the track, it's going to pay off for you if you've got a great, great attitude. And in my um, experience, it's totally true. And, and in most of, you know, the people that are successful in, in radio that I can think of, they all did that. Like, my boss, yeah. Casey, I think, is one i i think that our workplace is so lucky to have him as a boss because he's the ultimate glow up story so like every intern that comes to work at the edge can look at casey and be like holy shit! if i work hard enough and i have a great attitude i could run this place one day because casey like literally started as an intern two weeks after i started at the edge and he has oh, gone awesome. from intern to promos, to sales, to like working in all these different departments, to being like an ops manager in Wellington. He's moved everywhere. He's had a great attitude always. And now he is the boss of the edge. And he's yeah. literally in 15 years, he played the long game and he went from intern to boss. And I think that's just kind of the best thing to, to witness. And I'm like, I feel so proud of him when I think that as a friend, but also just to see that sort of thing. The so, accomplishments he's made along the way to been like yeah. I work alongside and like, you and then to where he is now yeah and that's the thing is that like when he was announced as our boss everybody was happy because everyone wanted him to be our boss and everyone loves working for him and everybody wants to 
do a good job for him, which I think is really important in a boss. And he's also yeah. very empowering and things like that. So that's cool. Um, but from More FM, I then went for Quit Your Day Job. And I'd already been emailing Leon, who was the content director at the time, getting ear checks. And I was always just kind of desperate to get better. And I still am. I think the day that you don't want to get better is the day you should retire because you're clearly too arrogant to care about how listeners feel about your show. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I just basically started from the bottom. Now I'm here. Yeah. As I go. And now I'm like, <laughs> it's weird to think that I went from being listener of the week on JJ Feeney's website, Radio Chick, to being the longest running female and second longest running staff member at the edge. Like, that's just, and I still, every single day that I walk in, I always, uh we'll walk in and be like how's everybody at the greatest radio station in the world today because i genuinely mean it like i genuinely i'm like fuck yeah and every time someone's like how you going like nine times out of the ten unless i'm having a bad brain day we're we'll like living the dream buddy living the dream and people think that i'm being sarcastic but yeah. when i say that i'm genuinely like i'm living my freaking dream right now like i'm working for the radio station that i love and care about and put yeah like it's like i couldn't imagine working anywhere else like yeah and i've oh, i always say it to my husband i'm like we joke about it on air about one day we'll get shipped off to more fm and things like that but i, I, don't, <laughs> know that, I don't know if that'll even happen to me i feel like i'm gonna be that person that just goes back into programming after they've aged out of the edge i feel like that's when i'm gonna go back into into off air stuff rather than being on air i don't know if i could be on air anywhere else but never yeah, said ever, i guess yeah it's because like the the time I've known you has always been associated with the edge. Yeah, you always glow like the edge culture, the the edge personality, like always, and especially like with the other co-hosts as well. You're always beaming. It's like if you have a shit day, you'll like you'll show it like when you want to. Like if you need privacy, you'll get that privacy. But when you want to like you know say you know I'm not having a great day and share that story, you can tell that it's not just like a facade. That it's just for sure. Yeah, it wasn't. I never really thought about it like that before and where i was doing an interview with john and ben once um we were doing it for like a magazine or something and uh john o said he was like oh what's one thing that nobody knows about sharon and i was like oh here we go here's gonna be a joke answer and john o was like sharon is one of the only broadcasters who is exactly the same on air as she is off air and she will say the same thing that she thinks about something off air as she does on air and i was like when he said that i was quite taken aback so i was like doesn't everyone but then like it just i don't know that's just i think just like growing up and having somebody that pushed me to embrace who i was it i, I think i just became who i was on air and that's who i am in real life so it's kind of yeah you have that little cool. opportunity to sort of grow up with like the edge and yeah. sort of see yourself grow as a person throughout that that tension yeah totally. yeah yeah all right so we might skip a couple of these questions we might go straight into uh that segment i was mentioning how we'll kind of like curate a playlist so here is here's oh, the titles yeah. hope it doesn't like crap out the stream playlist no, you analysis no that's the wrong titles <laughs> wrong one uh i need to find it where are you here it is we're gonna do a uh, playlist analysis that's the word. Ooh. Little titles. All right. I love a game. Yeah. So we've That's kind fancy. of. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we're gonna do playlist analysis. I've changed the format because I realised some people might not have Spotify and have, you know, that kind of thing, or they might watch YouTube or what, you know, listen to Apple Music. I'm an Apple Music girl. <laughs> Spotify pre will all the way. <laughs> Thanks, Buck. Um, <laughs> So, the the way we've changed it this time is we're going to create a dream playlist and then analyze the the songs and sort of like the the meaning behind the um, this playlist. So, Sharon, yeah. would you like to go into? I actually couldn't find one of the songs because I was finding like little reference pictures sort of put up on the the video. Arcacia. Oh, okay. I couldn't find Arcacia. Um, the the last oh, one. Maybe I spelled your name wrong. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, um... I'm sorry. You're a good, you're a good. But let's start off with the that first one that you had. 
First one, okay, so my first song is, and I fell in love with her in lockdown, um, it's Kelsey Ballerini, and she is a country singer, don't judge me. Um, I think that she's freaking amazing, and I her album that was my most listened to album last year, um, which was great, because then she re 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 released, uh, sorry, that was my foot, um, then she released like an acoustic version of it, so it was like a double dose. Um, yeah. But the song is called Overshare, and the reason that I love it is because every single lyric of this song is my personality. Yeah. So it's just a jam. Nice. That's nice. Uh, what was your second song in this uh, in, uh, the little playlist that we're doing? Second song is Into You by Teeks. I freaking love Teeks. He is just one of the greatest voices I've ever heard. And the fact that he comes from New Zealand makes me even happier. Um, he is such an incredible talent. He's so softly spoken and kind. And just everything about him in this album is... Perfect. His voice. It's... Oh like, my god. From like the I played the titles again. My it's bad. So good. <laughs> yeah, he's just you have the 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 voices you hear. Especially Jaden coming from the edge and then you hear like the deep tone and it's like Wow, this is different, Whoa. this is new. Yeah, and like yeah. now it's just so natural now just to hear his voice. It's just yeah. Teek's so voice is just I feel Beautiful. unique in the sense of like the, the tone that he can sort of do, the range. Yeah, definitely. He's so good. Um, my next song is a song I actually heard. I don't know if you've watched Ginny and Georgia on Netflix, um, but it was a song that they played and I like Shazammed it. Um, it's by Death by Romy and the song's called Problems. And I love the song so much. I just, but it's weird. I went and listened to her EP and the rest of the songs I didn't really get into. And the song yeah. is so different to her music, but I love the song. Um, and I just love like all the clever plays on words and stuff that she has. So. That's my jam. Nice, nice. And what was the uh, the fourth song that you had in your song, in the playlist? Um, it's by Elephant. Elephant. Um, the song's called Drunk and Angry. I only just discovered uh, Elephant because um, New Zealand producer Joel Little, aka Goodnight Nurses lead singer. Yeah. Um, he were, he produced and co-wrote the song with her, and he posted about it. And I um, I've known Joel for years, and so I always. And I think he's such an incredible songwriter. Uh, so anything that he posted, he worked on, I want to hear it because there's no doubt I'm probably going to like it. Uh, and I absolutely fell in love with this song. And they just released another song yesterday called Notorious. And she has just got such a cool voice. And I highly recommend that people check her out. She's cool. Nice. And my last song is Acacia Pictures. So Acacia is, um, you would have heard her on Firefly. She, um, one, uh, Firefly with Drax Project, and she basically won a spot to perform much different 60s part on tour with Drax Project uh, and their and their collaboration. And then they were like, "Holy shit, this girl is amazing!" And they ended up working with her. And now Acacia's doing her own thing. And not only is she extremely musically talented, but she's epic person as well. So really yeah. like it. Nice, nice, and that is. Mm -hmm. The playlist analysis. Now I can play the titles. Yeah. Hitting the button. There we go. <laughs> Man, the, the buttons are just because I'm doing everything. There's no one like above me or anything like that. Every yeah, button yeah. I have to like press. So it's like so much happening everywhere. <laughs> Don't um, worry about. It. All good. All good. All good. Nice. 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 All right. So we're gonna talk about your TV portion. If um, okay. If that's all good. So. You've um, presented shows on now uh, defunct R.O.P. Uh, for <laughs> for live yeah. um, and yeah. past shows on the Edge TV. I wish I could find the just old footage, but I think because of the change of company and stuff, some of that footage is you can't quite find anymore. So could you talk yeah. about that? Yeah. So I loved um, I loved working on those shows because I love I love music so much and. Um, it was funny with Four Live. I was music director of The Edge at the time, and because their music was super similar, I um, was a bit naughty. Um, but I would reschedule the whole show uh, yeah. <laughs> because it would just be like things like I didn't want to have two female artists going into each other. I just like to give people variety that were watching. Um, and so I got a little bit psycho about that, and so I would reprogram, reorder the music in the show. Um, 
come up with like silly characters and things like that. And yeah. I remember one Friday we got this like stupid ratings um, and the boss of local production went up to the producer and was like, what did you guys do on the show on Friday? Like you guys got a 10, like you guys usually get a three, like this is what, what's going on here. Yeah. And um, it was like, oh, but it was, I don't know. It was just, I really got into it and I get into, I'm a, I sway outside of my lane kind of gal and um, I really embraced that show and I loved it and I was really sad when I couldn't do it anymore. Um, and then we would do the ones on Edge TV, which I, nah, they were like, I, I did one show on Edge TV and I liked it, but I, if I'm honest, I didn't love it. Um, I didn't love that it was pre-recorded and I didn't love. Yeah, you weren't able uh, to have that like live experience that Money and Steph had at the time yeah, was being able to have that live interaction. Yeah, I'm a real live TV gal or I want to, you know, like interact with an audience in some way, like if there's people clapping or whatever. Um, but I just didn't, I wasn't super passionate about it and we would have to like run, go in and like blast it out really quickly. And then you could just, I, and I think you could kind of tell that it was like- they were Very rushed. Three, an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was because we were having to use a studio at TV3 and they didn't want us to take up too much time because we weren't as important as three. But um, yeah, I, 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 I do miss doing music TV and I wish I could do it, but um, yeah, I don't know. We need to get shows back on each TV. Yeah, it'll be like, hey, um, people at Disco- Is it Discovery that you'd have to like, please, for the love of all things, bring the shows back? Did well, actually- we run it, but I think we would have- There's like some technical thing between there and there, so I don't know. I don't, I don't get involved in that stuff. Yeah, there's <laughs> like- There's been a lot of people um, that have seen like, kind of all over the place, like, with the shows? Because that was some of the things that kind of brought me into the Edge TV was just these different shows that focus on different sort of parts of music that you'd hear quite almost every day, but not like, you know, yeah. the same repetitiveness. Yeah. Yeah, I always, my dream was um, always to get like a lot, because we had Smash in the afternoon with Marty and Steph. My dream was to have, you know, you have your live and director show then, but then also have a live breakfast one. Yeah. So it went in the morning, like six till nine, and it was like a live music show that people could interact with and stuff like that. That would have been nice. I think it was just a money thing because you need somebody at three to push buttons and things like that as well. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Um, yes. Yeah. So I did that, and then Guy Clint and I, who I was doing Drive with at the time, we got asked to do um, Extra Factor, which was like the after show of X Factor. And it was really funny because it was so loose. Like it was, uh, it was so loose. And it was one of, I think it was like one of the funnest shows I've ever worked on, like for telly. And we just had a blast. And like all the judges loved coming and, um, and being on it because they could just be stupid. And like Don Bowden was like the demon. And um, yeah. they, but even the crew like loved working on it because we just wanted to have fun and we didn't, you know, have egos or anything. And we were down to do anything. and. It was just a stu- like they'd all come and the crew would all come and drink their beers and watch our show and it was really fun. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I was sitting in catering one night and uh, Schusterman, Andrew Schusterman, who was the boss of three at the time, he was like, "Hey, we're going to do New Zealand's Dancing with the Stars. We need a female host. Who do you think should host it?" And I was like, "This guy." This one. This guy. And he was like, I walked into that, and Haley Cunningham, who was like my TV goals. Um, she is like one of the big executive producers of a lot of local productions. Um, she was like, man, you walked into that and she was just laughing. And I was like, this, yeah. <laughs> this and one. Then I emailed them later and was like, hey, by the way, I was serious. I'm keen as. And then a couple of weeks later, I got a call from Hayley Cunningham and she was like, we want to offer you Dancing with the Stars. And I was like, no fucking way. And was like, so excited. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and then I did that first season, and then we did another season, and I thought I was going to get fired because everyone else seemed to not be doing the show anymore apart from me, and then yeah. we kept going, and um, so far, so good, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to do it again this year, but we're just waiting to find out at this stage, but yeah. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And if you're just joining us now, uh, Sharon's actually one of the hosts for one of the Dancing with the Stars series that's locally done. This, this girl, Hello. this one. Hello. Hey. <laughs> nice. So I know you kind of crunched your time, so let's quickly try and find some, some different questions just so that 
we don't take up too much of your time because uh, right now uh, I don't have anything to like cross live to but uh, Sharon's uh, co-host is currently by the time you watch this if you're watching it on YouTube he's slapping chicken live on um, live on the internet just slapping it until it's hopefully cooked someone's getting it's not really cooked. it looks like liquid chicken now it's, <laughs> gross. it's so gross Someone's getting salmonella tonight. <laughs> uh huh, 100%. Yeah, alright, so we're gonna talk about uh, music fests because that's the Edge just loves the festivals. Um, love a festi. Love a good festi. Uh, what was your most memorable concert or local gig that you've uh, you've been to? As a local a local artist? A local gig or all artists, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, would be, my best concert of all time was Jay-Z and Kanye West Watch the Throne tour in London. That was just ridiculous. And in New Zealand, my favorite was, I'm gonna say Jim Beam Homegrown, and it was the last ever, two, two first equals, was the last ever Goodnight Nurse show. I, and I was side of stage and I was just like, oh my God, this is my childhood, I'm so sad. Um, and that was just so awesome. And then, the other first equal was Element OP did their first reunion at Jim Beam Homegrown. They've reunited a few times now, but it was the first time they got back together in ages. And it was so good. And when I was like 18, I was working in Masterton at Moore FM and I got drunk at a thing that I was hosting called Summer Hummer, which is the worst name ever. <laughs> and um, Element OP had to give me a ride home in their van to my yeah. house because there was no one there to drive me home. I was going to have to walk. Yeah. And because uh, my co-host wouldn't give me a ride, he was like, I've got my restricted. But he was annoyed with me because I got drunk, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so they gave me a, drive, a ride home. And I said to them, I was like, can you guys play your song Weed Out at my 21st? And um, they never did. So at their reunion, they played Weed Out and they dedicated it to me. It oh, that's crazy. awesome. Um, and then straight after them, She Hard played. And it was the, so cool. And I was side of stage for She Hard. And then right across from me, John Toogood, if he's ever playing a show where his parents are, his parents will set up deck chairs on the side of the stage and they watch John just like, just like people in a pit <laughs> pit, like, oh, John, so great. And it was just so cute seeing his like elderly parents watching him from deck chairs on the side of the stage. So those would be my favorite. Nice, nice. So um, this one, it can kind of be played into two because you actually uh, advocated, I think, for it. From memory uh so this question is what musical act would you love to see perform one day one of them was beyonce right like you were one of the fit uh each host that were like come on beyonce come to new oh, zealand yeah, and she came to new zealand right i started a petition called bring beyonce to new zealand and we got like seventeen thousand people on the facebook page and then she announced four shows but i didn't get to meet her which was very sad oh um, dang i know but it was fun it was cool. That was that was yeah, really really awesome. I love Beyonce. She's amazing. Hell yeah. Uh, see someone else though that you would like to see perform one day in New Zealand or go to. Oh, I would done. love so much. I really want Kanye to come. Like I know that people have a lot of opinions on Kanye, but his shows are so good, and he has the coolest sets. Like I really really wanted to see um, the tour where he had the floating stage and things like that. So I yeah. would love to see him. I would love to see Robin and very niche, but I would love to see um, Betty Who. Um, she's like an Australian pop star that is based in America and I love her. And I've met her once and she was the best. But <laughs> I am obsessed with her. Oh, and I'd like to see Kelsey Ballerini. But I don't know if any of these people will come to New Zealand, which is sad. Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on, COVID. Can you yeah. yeet her for ways so that we can like, you know, live, yes. live up with the good music? All right, so yeah. we're gonna do a bit of a wrap up now. So, um, okay. are there any projects that you'd like to plug? And where can people well, find you? Uh, if you're in New Zealand, then you can listen to our radio show, Sharon and Jade, and on The Edge from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday. Um, you can find us on Instagram, at Sharon and Jaden. Um, very desperate for followers, so. <laughs> so uh, oh, sorry, what was that? So, are you on Twitter? Is there an account for Twitter? No, we're not on Twitter, but I'll put our Instagram handle in the chat. There we go. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, we um, also I've got season two of Trainee Sexologist, which is a podcast I do with my best friend Morgan, and it's following her journey from 
working behind the scenes in radio to being a sexologist, which is a lot of fun. So I'll put the handle for that there as well if people want to check that out. We've got the first episode coming out on the 20th of April. So nice. I wish I could play the trailer, but I couldn't quite pull it off um, Instagram because when I was pulling stuff from Instagram, as you guys would see this uh, later on as a VOD, Instagram was down, so I couldn't pick the video. I tried to click into it, but it was like, failed to load. Can't load, yo. Awesome. But that's alright. Yeah. Alright, so I think we might be almost finished here. Yeah, so um, people can find you, Sharon Casey, on all on all of yep, the platforms. I am oh, just for kicks. Hey, thanks for joining us, babes. Bloody love ya. Thank you. Um, Thank you for joining. It was so cool. Um, yeah, no, that was really fun. I've never done a Twitch before, so I was really nervous. So it's been cool to um, to jump on, and also uh, it was amazing to like sit down and yarn to you and meet you semi in real life yeah this soon one day we'll be able to meet in uh in person for sure it'll be yeah, awesome if you're, ever in auckland, if you're ever in auckland you have to come and um come and have a tour and sit in on a show i'd love to have you yeah that'd be awesome well uh guys if you are watching this as a vod somewhere else this the, the next part will be clipped out because we're gonna send you guys uh to a rerun of last week's episode last week the last episode of uh, Let The Music Speak, which was with uh, Sam and the Siren. So if you've missed any episodes of Let The Music Speak, you can watch them uh, on demand at youtube.com forward slash nz7f. They will be all here and you get to see uh, this this person right here uh, on Monday or Sunday, New Zealand time. This girl. So you'll be able to watch this all again if you missed uh, most of the episodes. So I'm going to run we fancy that we have end credits because I I feel like I should. Ooh. Ooh, I feel like I should like you know make credits to, you know acknowledge the people that have this music I can play on stream. So we're gonna leave you till now. But kakitia no inohora and uh, see you in the next stream. Year for initiative is tomorrow, so come and hang with us. Uh, One p.m. New Zealand time, six p.m. Pacific time. Bye for now. <laughs>